Here we go. Right, guys, so we were building on true magic, which was the foundational principles. Oh, here comes Sarah. Before, before I go on with the teaching, I want to, where is Sarah? She's connected. Yes, Sarah. Hang, hang on, <laughs> I'm not ready. I have a lot of time company. That's okay. <laughs> yes, of course, yes, of course. I just wanted to loop Sarah in as well and say, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining the team so quickly in prayer. So I've got that on recording now, and when she comes back, I'll repeat it. <laughs> Come back quickly. Come back, Sarah. I'll just go. All right, I'll just go. But, um, all right, pop her on mute. No, here she comes again. Here she comes. Yeah. So, Sarah. The reason, I, the reason I was waiting for you was just to say that, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for jumping in so quickly when Sylvia reached out earlier today and to, for being a part of that prayer chain because that was amazing uh, to see all of that love just pouring so beautifully out for Sylvia uh, who made an incredible recovery. So it was just uh, so nice to be able to celebrate our community and the group and the, the power of what it is that we can do together uh, when we join like that so I wanted to, I wanted to share that with you as well Sarah. Thank so. you. Thank you. Um, so today my darlings we are moving further into light work. We, we kicked off the year with True Magic which gave us the foundational principles for, for energy work really for miraculous creation and for the, the ability that we have to call new things into being. Um, and uh, and we're sort of we're, we're taking that even further into light work now. Light work is the shift from the meaning of life is about enhancing my experience to the meaning of life is about enhancing everyone's experience. So that's that's what light work is about. So we're going to take everything we've learned in true magic, and now we're going to elevate that even further and say how can I apply it not just to to me and to my universe but also to the everything to the whole um the the great whatever it is that's bigger than us right that's light work and so we started yesterday a little bit that with um with the exploration of prayer um, and enhancing the amount of love the amount of uh, of true spiritual power that is present in our prayer work you know and we saw today just how effective prayer is when the practitioners are united in a great powerful container of true love, of sovereignty. So there's a, there's a craft of cultivating the spiritual power embedded in our prayer. And because prayer is the melding with the infinite, the endless, through your intention, um, then in, in other words, your being is a form of prayer. Your being is is a vibrational prayer into the universe. And the, and the core message of yesterday's introductory teaching was that if you know who you are and how you work in the world, then you can design a prayer practice that allows you to align with the greatest flow of love. So the Thursday video uh, course teachings that we've got in the inner circle are a, a part of your exploration of who you really are and getting used to distinguishing which voices are at play so that you can shift your knowing of who you are into one that is more aligned with the flow of love. Therein lies the great power of your prayer. Now, when your way of life is prayer, when you are somebody who is prayerful in your intentions and in your actions and in your dealings with the day to day, then you're in a constant state of channeling love. If you're washing up is a prayer, if you're driving to work is a prayer, then you're in a constant state of channeling love in some way, right? Because prayer is the melding with God. And so if the prayer is the melding with God, then the more you pray, the more you are training your psychonumosomatic vibration, yes, your, your universe underneath this diamond, <laughs> you are training your psychonumosomatic vibration to know true love. 
So you're, you're building your spiritual muscle when you're in prayer. That's when you have great sovereignty. And that's when you can begin to really nurture the spiritual crafts, right? It's best not to try and nurture the spiritual crafts before you've come to great love. I've tried that and it doesn't work. That's black magic. That's sorcery. That's voodoo and hoodoo and all of the other stuff. <laughs> but when you are in love, then your active involvement with, with magical supernatural craft is a spiritual gift because now you have the magnetism to make a true impact for love. You have the wisdom to practice within the energetic guardrails of spiritual law. And that's, that's exactly why we started off the year with the True Magic series to set those founding principles so that you do have the guardrails of spiritual law. And you can go back anytime you like in the group and rewatch those. So moving into light work then, let's say we've now cultivated our capacity for love. We've established the founding principles for true magic. We've understood how to read magic in the world. We've covered all of the different crafts. Um, or I mean, in fact, all of the different ways of interpreting uh, the craft of true magic. So now let's look at the light work. Now let's look at light work. Let's look at taking, um, let's look at the spiritual crafts according to the Bible. Let's take the sovereign way lens and let's look at what it says in the Bible about what superpowers are truly available to you. And you might say, Surely there's an infinite number of spiritual superpowers, minds totally unique. And I say, sort of, it is unique in its essence and its application, but just like how there are a certain number of species of monkey, there's also a certain number of species of supernatural crafts within spiritual law that are available to the human consciousness. And they are found in 1 Corinthians 12. Come on, Elizabeth, where is it? Give the page. Aha, aha. There are different kinds of gifts. For 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 11. Okay, if you're, if you're tracking with your own Bible there. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 11. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. Right, we get that. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. Got it. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Great. So now we have qualified, validated, justified personality differences. We have now said that it is the same God in all our archetypes. And we have said that the, every gift and every service and every kind of working, every, every mechanism with which we apply our superpowers, it is the same God working through them all. So that gives you immediately permission to start looking for the perfect formulation of what you're supposed to be like. Now to each one of the, to each one, that's you and me, to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good, the common good. So that's what makes it a spiritual gift is if it's for the common good. And here we go. This is a list of the superpowers. To one there is given through the spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge. To another, faith. To another, gifts of healing. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, 
speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one, just as he determines. Oh, that's a lot of fun. So let's unwrap each of them in turn. And let's demystify each of those and actually see clearly through the sovereign lens what each of these um, uh, qualified spiritual superpowers actually are. And then see clearly where all that excess love goes when it's released from imprisonment and allowed to really flourish through you. So listen carefully and know what you know about each of these gifts. Let me make it abundantly clear once again. These are superpowers. They are supernatural gifts that are not only approved under spiritual law, but you are also called in, in, 1, 12, 30, in 1 Corinthians 12, 31, he says, now eagerly desire these gifts. So they're not, only, they're not only approved, but you are also encouraged. In fact, you're called to want them so, to long for them so, to cultivate them therefore. So in order that they're listed, here they are. Number one, wisdom. Now, wisdom is the embodiment and appropriate application of the lessons you have learned in life. It's your journey made meaning. It's the crone in you who has gathered and, and synthesized and understood the truth of everything she's been through. It's the ability that you have in any given time to draw from that well, that reservoir, that is so abundantly full of good wisdom and know what to do in the moment. But why is this a superpower? Because your life is always unfolding from within itself. So there's nothing out there in the world of your creation that you can't handle. Because all of the resources and all of the energy that you need is coming from within you. And everything that you have created so far has, has been built on that. So your wisdom is the application of what is already in you into the moment. Any problem can be solved. That's a true superpower. What if wisdom was brought to the political complexity in Eastern Europe? What if the leaders were wise? The second supernatural power described as a higher gift is knowledge. This superpower is your ability to gather, retain, recall information about your area of expertise. On Facebook the other day, there was this woman in, oh, why is it always the community pages? It was the, it was the community page and you get these, someone posts a thing and it turns into this bizarre rant of trolling and stuff like that. And there was this woman posted, a fairly innocent comment about how she was struggling to keep her jacuzzi water balanced because every time someone goes in the pH goes all off and she'd been trying everything she could to balance this water and she put the test strips in and she just could not figure it out and so what she'd done in her wisdom was call the jacuzzi guy and say could you come over to my house uh, four times a month, like once a week, and balance the jacuzzi water. And he said, yes, I certainly can do that. That would be $250 a month. To which point she began this incredible rant on Facebook about how could, how could it possibly cost $250 for you to come and balance the water four times a month when all you have to do is put the strip in and, and adjust the pH. It wouldn't take more than 20 minutes. 
And someone else pointed out perfectly, I thought, that it isn't the time she's paying for. It's his knowledge. It's the knowledge that she clearly didn't have. She tried everything, couldn't balance the pH in her jacuzzi. It's the man's knowledge that she's paying for. Do not underestimate the power of your knowledge and do not undervalue the knowledge of somebody else. What knowledge do you have? It is a superpower. Bring your awareness to it, gather it up and treat it like a precious resource. Treat it the way you treat your money, treat it the way you treat your water with respect. Next on the list, faith. Faith. This is my favorite one. Yes, my lovely, faith is a superpower. When everyone around you wants to identify with the shifting sand dunes, and they become convinced that everything is falling apart or that they themselves is falling apart. Your faith in the endlessness of the unseen, your knowing that there is a happy ending and that all is well, and your ability to look into the darkness and spot that mustard seed of faith and say, there it is, let's go that way. This superpower has kept our civilization from going the same way as all the previous advanced civilizations on this planet. Sometimes the spiritual seekers will googly eyes at the idea of Atlantis or Lemuria, but they're not here. We are. Could have obliterated ourselves many times. Putin's got his finger very close to that button. Faith is the superpower that brings us through impossible darkness. We are saved. There's been enough faith this time round to keep us up and going. So your ability to hold on to this faith and keep your compass calibrated and keep everybody's life jacket inflated, that is extraordinarily special. That's an incredible superpower. The masters of misery will do everything they can to make you forget what you know is true. Hold on to your faith. I'm going to remind you of the um, power up meditation in the hero protocol. Actually, the whole hero protocol um, from the sovereign way is a way to build your faith muscle. It is a little bit triggering and it is a little bit uncomfortable, but it's powerful medicine and it builds your faith muscle. So keep going through the hero's protocol, especially that power up meditation. So keep cultivating your gift, your faith, your superpower. Next on the list is healing. Of course, healing is a superpower. Spirit heals, love heals, Jesus heals. Time doesn't heal. Time is just a measurement of change. Time is how we see healing come to pass. But healing is a natural state of being, you see, because it's innate to the essence of love. So a healer, you who are, have a superpower of healing, you who are gifted in this higher spiritual craft, your job is to accompany an energy field into that natural state of healing. That's what you're doing. You don't do healing. You bring the thing into healing. And there are countless ways, of course, from channeling life force through the hands or through the voice or through the gaze or genius medicine, precision surgery, tender nursing, music, art, the list goes on. But the mechanism that is happening with the superpower of healing, the mechanism is, is that what was not truth becomes truth. 
That's what healing is. So scan your life. In what ways have you healed others? In what ways have you been healed? Yes, of course, we give up the glory. We know where the true healing is coming from. But what does that mechanism look like in your life through you? Then, next on the list, miraculous powers. Miracle work. <laughs> you know, it is mostly Christians who give me flack for being a miracle worker. It's right there in the Bible. It's right there in the book. Miracle work is a superpower. We talk a lot about miracle work in the sovereign way because it's such an exciting way to channel all that excess love that is liberated when you overcome the problem of survival. We have a three-part course on, course on miracles that we all did before Christmas, dealing with the mechanics involved in miracle-mindedness and in the universal laws around quantum possibility, you know, which is allowing sudden unexpected occurrence, spontaneous remission of a terrible tangle. And in secular language, right, when we all have to go out there in the world disguised as normal human beings, we use the word manifesting. That's what that means manifesting, calling a reality, calling into reality an, an inexplicable thing. Boom, there it is. Behold, I have manifested a car parking space. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you remember when we were beginners and we were always so excited when we manifested a car parking space? <laughs> or a new start, or a forgiven heart? What do you know of miracles? Here it is, listed as one of the supernatural gifts that you are allowed to and supposed to eagerly desire. Miraculous powers. Then prophecy. Prophecy is so important. Prophecy is not about reading the future. That's not what prophecy means. The future is not ours to tell. And for the most part, even throughout old scripture, when advisors or when, um, when leaders visit prophets, they are seeking advice, they are seeking wise counsel. Now, we can't predict the future. We can maybe predict energetic side effects of what is. And we can do that with great precision. We can look at the current state of affairs and we can calculate probable energetic ripple effects. And we can do that, like I said, with great precision, but that isn't prediction. That's just reading what is. So it's knowledge. It belongs to the family of superpowers that's called knowledge. It's not reading the future. It's not prophecy. Prophecy is truth. Probability is not truth. Probability is probability. Prophecy is truth. In fact, in chapter 14, Paul goes on to say that this is the most desirable superpower. He says, eagerly desire the higher spiritual gifts, especially prophecy because it always and immediately glorifies the Lord. It reveals, it opens space for love. So prophecy is your ability to know truth, allow truth, formulate truth and convey truth. And the way that you do this, of course, is unique to you. Yesterday in the teaching, when we were talking about prayer, we were talking about how do you amplify the, the spiritual power embedded in your prayer. We, we repeated the house and home thought experiment that we did a few weeks ago. Um, and we did it in relation to prayer because being in prayer is being in truth. And that thought experiment helps us build the muscle of recognizing in what way am I leaning in or out of truth at the moment? And prophecy is bringing that truth back and out to people. 
That's what prophecy is. So if you follow the great leaders today, you follow the great thought leaders, they are prophets. That's what prophecy is. Do you have the courage to speak the truth? And I don't mean being blunt about your opinions and your facts, but really speaking the truth of your faith, of your love, of the knowing that you have, that you and all others are indeed of God, and the solutions that you're aware of to the problems that we're facing. It isn't easy. It's a superpower. I posted a post yesterday, uh, or the day before, whenever it was, and it triggered two of the greatest dragons in my life. The persecution from the Christian and the persecution from the atheist. And the calling there was to stand in authority to speak the truth to, to, to both of these two creatures. And I say that they're creatures because they're imaginary. I've made them up. They may well have been um, perfectly lovely people on the other side of the digital Facebook thing, but in my universe, they were very real monsters. And the calling was to speak the truth in the face of that demon. Terrifying. <laughs> oh my word. Lord forgive me for having such first world problems when there's war going on in the world. <laughs> and thank you for your mercy. And thank you for the lessons. Thank you for the growth. It is a superpower to speak the truth. Next on the list is the ability to distinguish between spirits. These days, we call that discernment. Can you tell one energy field from another? Are you in the presence of hatred, falsehood, jealousy? And if so, do you have the power to be sovereign near it? Can you discern if the mood shifts you've just noticed in yourself are because of an emotion, which is a biological response to an external stimulus, or a sensation, which is an electrical message to the brain about an environmental quality, or a feeling, which is an identity-based spiritual response to an inner process. If you can discern between spirits, between energy fields, between intentions, between frequencies of energy, all the power in the universe to make choice. So we've been doing the Archetype Alchemy course in the inner circle, and we've been practicing discerning between different voices in our psyche. Can we tell when we are surrendering our authority to the child or to the prostitute? Can we, ten, can we tell when, when our sovereign or our lover is trying to take control? Can you tell when, when pride is influencing your decision-making or when vanity is holding you back from expression? Can you tell when you're choosing lust over love? Can you tell if the guilt you're feeling is a good kind of guilt trying to get a message across to you about shifting your direction or your behavior or the sneaky kind of guilt that's trying to diminish your sense of worth? This discernment, this, this practice of knowing the difference, this distinguishing, is acknowledged in the Bible as a supernatural spiritual gift. And you have it. How cool is it being a sovereign master? How cool is it knowing that 
we are cultivating these gifts. We are choosing to cultivate these gifts and we're attending to cultivate these gifts. These are supernatural spiritual gifts. And finally, in that list in, in, in 1 Corinthians 12, speaking and interpreting tongues. Now, light language is a way of transmitting meaning across language and cultural barriers. And there are ways of doing that. Some people encode imagery or artwork. Sylvia's phenomenal at this, by the way. And others learn metacosmologies like the sovereign way, which transcends religious vernacular and brings truth, whatever your religion. So in learning the sovereign way and learning the glossary of the sovereign way and learning the principles, the 12 principles, you have a way of speaking to anybody about universal truth. So this superpower really is communication when you think about it. Do you remember when all the face masks first came out and you had some people who were afraid that we would lose connection with one another because we wouldn't be able to see each other smile? A smile can transcend a face mask. A smile can transcend any language. My six-year-old daughter pointed that out the other day. She says, I think they, the smile is the same in every language. It is. So in whatever way you're using communication or language to, to, to transcend potential barriers of understanding, that's a superpower. And finally, levitation. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> oh. No, we've, look, we've heard of gurus claiming to have accomplished levitation and other incredible things like the one inch punch or setting fire to paper. And these demonstrations may well be, you know, I absolutely can see that these things can be actualized energetic effects of focusing chi in a particular way, but they aren't superpowers. They aren't higher spiritual gifts unless they fall under miraculous powers or miracle powers, if they were used for the common good, if they were used to glorify the Lord, if, if the purpose was to enhance love or to demonstrate the magnificent power of possibility, then perhaps you could say that these things are miracle powers, but in and of themselves, they aren't higher spiritual gifts. And sometimes we find ourselves thinking about spiritual gifts, activate your spiritual gifts. We think about, we covet the idea of these mirac miraculous third eye activation openings. And now I can control the, the planets or, or the, travel across space and time or body hop to different places. These things may well be possible, but we mustn't covet them as higher spiritual gifts unless they are for the common good. So if you're ever wondering, does this thing that I'm developing now, or this thing that someone is showing to me, or whatever it is before me, does this count as a superpower? Ask yourself, is it wisdom, knowledge, faith, miracle work, healing, prophecy, discernment, or communication. If it's one of these eight things, it's a superpower. So I'm gonna to read to you this lovely bit. Consider this reading a prayer. So settle in. Give yourself a couple of moments just to loosen the shoulders, loosen the spine, soften the face muscles, slow down the thinking. Descend gently into the sacred heart. 
and allow yourself to open to receive the word of the Lord as it is written in the Bible. And let it be a way of enhancing the power of higher spiritual gifts, the underlying agency that is love. Let it be a deepening of your relationship with love. So put your hands at heart center. Remember, this is how we always begin prayer time, just as an acknowledgement that where heaven and earth meet, that is where I am. I am that I am. I know who I am. And I know how I serve. And your hands in prayer position is your sacrament. Now eagerly desire the greater gifts and I will show you a most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. And always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Where there are tongues, they will still. And now these three remain. Faith. Hope and love. And the greatest of these is love. Lovers, consider it a delight to be a miracle worker, to be a healer, to be a prophet, to be a wise woman, to be a genius, to be an expert communicator. Consider it a delight. 
eagerly desire these gifts. Eagerly desire. Don't you hear the fun in that? The play in that? And don't you hear the, the, the universal permission to be in play? You see, when we do the shadow work, when we attend to the things that are not truth, and we allow them to become what they are, when we allow them to be, dis to be restored into truth, we liberate all of this lovely, lovely, lovely wellspring of spiritual power. And knowing what the, the, the spiritually ordained superpowers are, shows you how to direct this love. It gives, you, it gives you something to grasp onto. It gives you a name to put to the craft. It gives you permission in scripture and in culture to practice a magic that really will be for the common good. This is light work, attention to truth, cultivation of the garden. So your job this week moving into this week, is to search for the evidence in your life of these superpowers at play. Seek the strands of them, speak them, say their names. When you see yourself at miracle work or you see healing present in your life, speak it. Identify it, isolate it and formulate it and make it known in your knowing that these are spiritual superpowers that you are in possession of. And when you've so magnified your awareness of them, look at how they are operating and see how you can cultivate them further. Begin to develop them. Train yourself. Come into closer mentorship with your teachers and be trained in them. A delight to eagerly desire the higher spiritual gifts. A delight to be a superhero in the world. I always wanted to be a superhero. What's your superpower, we would ask each other? Invisibility, flying, meditation. I chose prophet, miracle worker, healer, wise woman, genius, communicator, and exquisite discerner of spirits. <laughs> and they all came true as they have for you. Thank you very much for being here, darlings. We're gonna finish a little bit early today. Sylvia's gonna to go and get some rest, my sweet darling, and we're gonna spend a little bit of time and healing um, for Sylvia and everybody who is connected energetically with this circle, ourselves, through our families, through our communities and through the whole world. So I wanna um, open the floor for some questions first. Does anybody have a comment or an idea or a question about any of the highest superpowers? Let's attend to those now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Talk more on the magnetism. You said magnetism for a profound, profound impact on love. Uh, I think I missed part of it, so I'm writing it down. Um, or magnetism for profound impact. Yep. Well, the, the greater your magnetism, the greater your impact. And that is, imagine, so, so now let's go back to the visualization of the sand dunes. And let's, let's imagine the adamantine particles being individual sand grains in an infinitely rich fabric of creation. That's one aspect of the Trinity called substance. And that substance responds to love. It responds to loving command. So the more love you hold, the greater your capacity is, the greater command you have over these adamantine particles. That's the same as magnetism. The more love you have, the more love you hold in your body, the greater power you have on the scale of human consciousness that was formulated by Dr. David Hawkins from zero to a thousand, the greater your capacity for love, the, 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 the higher your vibrational point of magnetism. So that's the connection between love and magnetism to increase your impact when it comes to prayer work or, or miracle work or 
a spiritual work of any kind to increase your impact. Because remember, a, a lot of the time we're dealing with in, something that's invisible. You know, when we're praying for something or we're healing for something, then we're dealing with invisible outcome or invisible results. So we can't always see our impact immediately. We can't always determine using linear empirical ways whether our prayers have actually done anything. So a lot goes on faith, but the way we can, the way we can be sure to enhance the impact that we're having, having is always to cultivate our magnetism. And we do that by enhancing our love. Yes, good, thank you for asking that question. Any others? No, good. All right then, <sighs> loves come together in gratitude for one another, in gratitude for the leaders of this world who have access to the same wellspring of wisdom and knowledge, of healing and miracle work, and of peace and restorative calm as the rest of us. And we call for the spirit of the universe to flood forward through all of our minds, our hearts, our souls, our strength and our bodies, through our networks and into the world. Let us be reminded of the truth that is true always. And let's stand in our knowing of peace. Let's stand together and collectively anchoring in peace in the world right now. Let us also extend healing to one another in this circle as a gratitude for our sister brotherhood under Christ, as an acknowledgement of the work that we are each and every one of us doing to cultivate each other's love for one another. For the common good we do this and we say in Jesus name, Amen. Go well into the world my loves and spend a little bit of time sending some extra love to Sylvia and thank you all so very much for being here. Bye-bye.